that most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just li you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful. Yeah, soul-killing. Soul-killing. Yeah. They're stuck in traffic all day, and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television, and they're... F if people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it, just keep at, keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus, and you can escape. You can escape, and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're gonna be okay. For making furniture feels good. If you make furniture, you make furniture for a living, and you, you feel a great satisfaction out of that, and you sell that furniture, look, man, if you can do that, you could, you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done, and you get the satisfaction, and you sell it to someone, and that pays your bills. That is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance, and you, you know, you're not really, you know, you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future this kind of like you're like Fuck, kill me now you know there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else and I hope they understand that they can and people that are trapped in bad situations one of the problems is you feel like this is your future you feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that there's no hope there's no light at the end of the tunnel there's no rainbow and if you feel like that that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting but if you can look at if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them. And I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. The, the, what's encouraged is go find a job. What's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into. Go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just and jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like for the rest of your life because you need a job because you're in debt because you have credit cards because you have student loans because that's what everybody does and so you do it too that's what's wrong you, you have an apartment you have to pay for you have a car you leased you have a wife that you have to feed you have a child you have to raise you have to you have your mortgage you have your this you have your that and that's where it all comes from well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. Th that's when you have your options. Well, your options are severely limited the more you gather responsibilities. Like, if I had to, as a 51-year-old father of three, married man, pays taxes, has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz, if I had to quit everything now and struggle the way I struggled as a stand-up comedian, it would never work. But the only way I could be this person now is if I took that chance when I was 21, when I was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff. That's the only way you, you ever get where you want to go. You have to, you have to take a path that's dangerous. And most people want to take the safe path. And the safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation almost every time. It's hell. It's hell. But can people just make that change? I mean, yes, look, you can, I believe that. But you can. have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan. And you have to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever shit job you do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you f***ed up and you got yourself stuck. 
So whatever you're doing, you have to do it like your life depends on it. And whether it is you're trying to be an author and you're going to, you're going to, if you're going to try to be an author and you're working eight hours a day, plus commuting, plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have, whatever time that you have, you have to attack like you're trying to save the world. You're trying to save your life. You don't want to drown. That one and a half hours a day that you have to write, God damn, you better be caffeinated and motivated. You got to go. You got to get after it and you got to have discipline. That's most people don't have those things. Most people don't understand what it's like to, to really go for something and to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific. I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like you screw something up, like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you've up. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. You have to make mistakes. You've been there, you feel it, you understand what it is, and then you have that time to adjust. That's why losing in life is so important. Whether it's getting dumped, getting fired, losing a game, lo loss. Those feelings where things didn't work out your way, that's important because it lets you know this is the bad feeling that comes when hmm. it goes wrong and you improve and then it makes the good feelings of victory all the better. And I mean that you know in a relative sense, like even getting good at something, forget about victory. Like, making a terrible book that gets rejected by every publisher and then writing a really good one and people accept it and you're like, fuck, I got better. Yes. Like that's no, that that's feeling. That's interesting, yeah. Those feelings of failure are really critical for your motivation. You see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a, there's a progression that you're not witness to. You don't see it. And that, that, that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors. It takes place in comedians and musicians. There is a starting point, and then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things. Don't be scared of failure. I think failure is awesome for you. All right. Good fucking morning. Um, what am I going to show you today? Um... On those uh, injection, that injection video that I showed you, um, what I didn't show you how to do is how to uh, put two compounds in the same syringe, and there's a little trick to it that I want to show you because you, um, you know, like I only need a half a cc of this. I mean, uh, 0.3 cc's of this and a half half cc of this. So instead of doing like two separate syringes or two separate shots, we're going to combine them into one syringe for a 0.8 cc or so almost a full cc uh, injection. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Because it does save some bullshit. And there's, like I said, there's a trick how to do it so you get no air and it's real easy. And there's no, you know, if, you, if you've never done this before, it's a real pain in the ass. So I'm going to show you the trick behind it. Okay, uh, so first thing I'll do is this. It's gonna tie the hands all up here. That, that seems a little high, eh? Oh well, whatever. Do my bottles. Show the tops of that. So here are your two syringes. Um, they're uh, the same ones I've used before. They're a three cc syringe with a one inch needle and it's a 23 gauge. Um, a lot of people prefer to use a 25. Um, it's smaller, it's a little harder to push oil through, but I find a 23 works really well. It's a little 
Uh, it goes in your injection, your oil goes in a little faster, but not too fast. <laughs> you know, so I recommend the 23. But you want to use the 25? Go ahead, and use 25. So what I do is I unscrew this and I throw this away. It's just the way the syringes come. All right, so we have a, um, a bottle of Test 400, and we have a bottle of Tren Ace. Now, usually what I do is whatever, um, um, whichever compound I'm using the most of, like the biggest um, shot, I mean biggest like uh, dose in the syringe, I'll, I'll pump that out first. And then the smallest one, I'll use um, this one. So be, I'm going to do a 0.5 cc of the test and a 0.3 of the trend. And I'll put the trend last into the syringe. Now these, I've already, I've already been using these. So there's already air pressure in there, like the proper amount of air pressure. But I still have to add some more. This is where the trick comes in. So you draw your air from here. Just pull on that. So take your trend first, because this is your last, this is the last um, uh, compound you're gonna put in the syringe. So just stick it in the rubber stopper, like so. Push the air into it, and then just take it out. Just do that. Then we go put more air, air, more air into this. Then we put it into our test 400. Push the air in. Now we just, let it go. See, it'll come down all by itself. Just keep your hand on it though. Now when you do this, there's going to be some air at the top. But it's not. So just push the air out. And then let it come down again. It'll stay nice and full without any air in there. So I got my, my 0.5 cc. I usually let it run until like till about one, then I'll push it to one c uh, half a cc. Well, maybe a little bit more. It's just because more is better. <laughs> so once I get to so this would be like a point six, then I'll just pull it out real quick. Now I'll keep my thumb on this. So now I'm at like a point six. I don't know if you can see that there. So I got my hand on that. Now I'll put it into the trend bottle. So there's going to be some liquid that comes out. Don't fucking worry about it. We don't penny pitch in here. So now I put it into the trend, and then I just let it come down. It'll come out all by itself. And I'll take it to... Just to almost to 1cc. And then I'll just push the whatever's... Um, the, like even if I go past... Um, even if I go past 1 with the trend in the combination the trend is still at the top so it's okay to push it back into the into the um into the syringe like so what if you get a little bit of testing or big fucking deal you're using the same compounds on your next shot anyway so it doesn't matter so now we have one uh well almost one cc of both compounds and there's no there's no air in there or anything like that because what happens if you don't put the air pressure in and you with in, uh, air pressure in those bottles before you do the shots you, know, you get all this air it's gonna get all fucked up you know so just trust me on this do it this way save yourself a lot of bullshit so put this needle cap back on twist this off throw that away and put the fresh one on and i'll look at my schedule and it's a uh, right thigh mid so basically is my thighs this is my my outside thigh. Well, I should say this way. I do a low, mid, and a high shot. That means if my knee's up here, if my knee is here, and say this is my hip, then I go one, two, and three. But I rotate through my thighs and my shoulders. So I'm not going to bother filming me putting this into my leg because it's such a pain in the ass. Can I try? Okay, well, I'll try and uh, 
and see if it doesn't work out then I'm not gonna bother filming it I'll just edit it out it's just so hard to film this okay To, um, the gym's open fucking 24-7, so the initial split that I, I wrote, um, I had to redo it, because <laughs> it was a worst case scenario, right, because we didn't know if the gym was going to be open 24 hours, you know, so my schedule, and so now what I did is I, I wrote an entirely new split that gives me a lot more freedom, availability, uh, leeway, you know, uh, I'll post that probably on, on that page there. It looks complicated, but it just, it, it just, yeah. This is, that's another video. <laughs> Let's get this one done. So, how do I fucking do this? Um, so, what did I say? Right thigh mid? Is that what I said? Uh, right thigh mid. This is almost impossible to fucking film. I fucking hate this. So this part here, what I would classify as uh, th th uh, low, medium, and then high. So we got to go in the middle today. <sighs> yeah, this is fucking hot. <coughs> yeah, if this is pain. Yes, I don't want. I'm not going to bother filming this. <laughs> It's just too hard with the hand and the and the thing is I'm doing these leg injections like three in one now so I gotta make sure I do them I can't be fucking around with the I can't make any mistakes here so anyways that's where I put the injections and I've already showed you how to do those on the other video so uh, hopefully that part helps on how to mix two kettlebells together until I see you guys again take care of yourselves take care of each other. Well, bless yourself.